quickly introduce myself. I am Marie Norden. I am Fedora's Community Action and Impact Coordinator. I've been involved in Fedora since before that, starting in 2013 with an outreach internship um, designing Fedora badges. So I've been around for a while and more recently have become the F Cake in 2019. And now I do all kinds of stuff all over Fedora, um, not just badges. All right, Anurul, do you want to introduce yourself? Of course, thank you very much, Marie. Hello, everybody. My name is Omnath. I'm Fedora Mindshare Chair member, also doing the Fedora website and application representative around Mindshare. Plus, I'm working with Fedora KDA team. Team along along with that, I'm also Fedora packager, and also again, welcome to to our talks. Back to you, Marie. Cool. So, what are we talking about today? We're going to talk about a range of things. First thing we're going to talk about is who and what Fedora is. We're going to talk about how Fedora is organized. We're going to talk about some specifics on how to join Fedora. We're going to talk about how to start your contributions to Fedora. And then we're also going to give some tips on becoming a successful contributor. And at the end, we can do any questions. Cool. So who and what is Fedora? We are a group of people from all over the world and we come together to develop various tools, software, and material to promote free and open source software. This is a picture from, I think it was Flock 2016 or 2017, but you could see that um, there's a whole bunch of us, but now that we're online, there's even more at our, at our virtual conferences, so that's been really cool, but we are from all over the world with different backgrounds, all different um, skill sets, and we all have a huge passion for free and open source software. All right, so what's our vision? The Fedora Project envisions a world where everyone benefits from free and open source software built by inclusive, welcoming, and open-minded communities. So I think it's, I'd like to think it's pretty self-explanatory um, but we do hope to create a community where all feel welcome and we hope to create an operating system that works for everyone. What is Fedora's mission? Fedora creates an innovative platform for hardware, clouds, and containers that enables software developers and community members to build tailored solutions for their users. So Fedora has more than just the workstation um, addition. We have a whole lot more, and we're going to go more into what those are a little bit later. So, oh, this is Honor Alp. Your turn. Fedora also has uh, four foundations. It has been there since the beginning of the Fedora. And they are basically pretty much also defining us and also defining us how do we do uh, the work we do. And we also um, basically believe these principles and we actually like them as well. It's uh, this far foundation is freedom, friends, teachers, and first. Uh, freedom is basically is rededicated free software and content. And when it's come to friend, basically we are strong, we are in community, is basically help each other and become friends. And I have a lot of friends around the Fedora, but since I joined, so that's basically one of the outcomes. Features is about, we care about excellent software, a good software, an open source software, but we also create this software is in a stable and good environment, so we can give them all of, all over the world to do our users. We can actually benefit from it. Uh, first is, we are committed to innovation. Means we, we, we just don't do the heavy lifting. We also provide this stable and robust uh, of free software, and basically, what is our distributed distribution? 
and also help the others to as well make make sure it's stable and also make sure that it's all for every one of our users as well and after based on this we have fedora deliverable and they are basically about um, certain federal releases we have to do we do, we do not just do one releases it's not just federal textile slash workstation we also care about federal servers if you have a uh do some some administration of a business federal service your choice you have a uh, iot devices federal iot is also one of our developers if you are you like working on container or immutable system whether a Coralis is going to be your friend, server level, or even if you want, you can even go something else. Whether Silver Blue is basically your another immutable operation system, is basically gives you a desktop level of experience, and you can still do and install your packages, but you are basically using more of the life pack and other choices. And then, of course, we have our main uh, desktop, which is Fedora Workstation, which is default, not deliverable. And others is basically Fedora Spins and Labs, is basically different desktop and use cases that we also have to deliver to our users, which we are very proud of. So there's one that's missing on here, and I'm not sure if it has a logo yet, but Fedora uh, Cloud? Fedora Cloud is as when yeah federal cloud is also uh, i think it's an up-and-coming edition uh it's an up-and-coming edition but uh let's just talk about this one thank you for reminding no federal yeah i just uh, i think we might have missed it on the slide is what i'm saying ah uh, go ahead at least let's talk about it so yeah let's do this let's do this um friendly links over there to squeeze it so Federal Cloud is basically is purpose for general purpose for create games. Basically, if you have a uh, uh, service, if you have a, uh, have some services from certain service providers, or it can be even custom, or it can be even yours for the big server, you can use Federal Cloud uh, for that purposes, or you can do a virtual machine applications or certain. Use cases also exist, and hopefully, as many, it will be also another addition. Hopefully. And let's talk about benefits of contributing to Fedora. It's going to be very. So I have to be honored. But I'm very happy to say I am learning a lot of, a lot of new technologies from Fedora uh, project and the project team members. Is learning something new is always an passion and always an amazing thing. Branding your network is also another uh, exactly a good result because you have your friends, they can basically back you up in your business network, even in your life, or it can be in your friends. Everything is possible. Advancing your careers, as I'm saying, is also another benefit. Giving back to the community is exactly another passion because you're learning. And you would like to give this uh, learning to back to community, which is contributing. And so amazing that we are something, uh, we are part of something even bigger, and it's always growing every single day, not just at a technical level. There are a lot of areas in Fedora is just make us so much bigger, so much strong, and so much, much more we are become strong community and of course we have to say it's always fun and we have don't forget we have also swag and i think one part is missing don't forget the badges always have ha, have fun to have these roles and as a badge collector i love badge and i also like and who doesn't because something is giving back the community not just doing something coding but getting some swag getting some badges Giving some extra smile on our faces or one of our contributors, it's just so important to us as well because we love this and we always be passionate. Cool. Uh, cool. 
I think this is, I think this is me. All right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how Fedora is organized. So this is an organizational chart that I last updated in 2021 of March. So it might need a little brushing up at this point. Um, but what you'll see is right there in the middle is the Fedora Council. And that is the top governing body in Fedora. Then on the right side, you can see Mindshare. Mindshare committee works on supporting the outreach side and the outreach efforts that happen in Fedora. And on the left side, you can see FESCO. That's the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee. And they are guiding the technical parts of Fedora and making decisions about what is going to Fedora and what is not going to Fedora. Connected to that, you can see um, additions, which we talked about before, and the spins, which we also talked about. But further on the left side, you can see all of the different teams that are involved. And these are technical teams that are working on everything from infrastructure to packaging to quality, insure, quality assurance to security. Um, there's all kinds of teams working over there. Basically, anything that you want to do technically is going to be in that area. Um, and then connected to the Fedora Council, you have uh, objectives. So objectives are like long-term goals for Fedora, right? So that's anywhere from six months to two year projects that are focused on, you know, improving some part of Fedora. Um, we've had technical and um, I would say more outreach focused um, objectives and uh, the folks that lead those objectives actually sit on the Fedora Council while they're doing that objective. Uh, underneath, you could see the diversity, equity and inclusion team. That's an update the, this graphic needs. Um, and they are focused on creating um, a more inclusive community and healthy community for us. And we actually have a representative that sits on our council to make sure that we're keeping those things in mind as we make decisions for the community. On the Mindshare side, you have a couple different sections. You have design, and there's all kinds of stuff happening with design. Everything from UI UX to the wallpaper that gets released with every Fedora release um, to badges. Excuse my dog, she's in the background shaking. <laughs> Um, and then you also have com ops underneath, and those are the outreach focused teams, such as the join SIG, advocates, ambassadors. And then over to the right, you kind of have the more one off teams. So that's everything from writing on the community blog, the magazine, um, mentor projects, translations, and, you know, IRC support, moderation, that sort of thing. So as you can see, Fedora is huge. There's so many different teams and different functions that are happening in Fedora that we need a huge map just to look at them. So quickly, I want to go into a little bit more about the governing bodies because they're pretty important. The Fedora Council, they're the top level community leadership. Um, they're responsible for the stewardship of the Fedora project as a whole. They are um, comprised of both um, like representative type folks and also elected individuals from our community, as well as the Fedora project leader, myself, the Fedora Community Action and Impact Coordinator, as well as the Fedora Program Manager. So we're there um, working on Fedora strategy, making bigger decisions for Fedora as a whole. Then there's the Fedora Engineering Steering Committee, which I talked a little bit about before. Um, they represent the technical leadership. So they're making decisions and debating decisions um, about what we're going to do with Fedora, the operating system, and what kind of decisions we're taking, what kind of um, ways the operating system will go technically. Um, and then the Mindshare Committee. Uh, the Mindshare Committee represents more of the non-coding and outreach leadership, as I talked about. It's mostly appointed representatives. Um, but there's also elected members there too. So we're doing stuff like organizing events, providing swag, providing event funding. Um, 
working on best practices, helping people out with surveys, this sort of stuff. So each of the governing bodies has a pretty specific function and we'd like to think that they complement each other well. So let's talk about how do I join the federal community? I mean, I certainly don't know, but I learn after a while later. And joining the community is going to be not super hard, very easy. If you just have to you have some perspective, who have probably have an idea and skills, I'm going to say person, person more small, uh, first of all is doesn't have to be technical. You can do anything, even a non-technical translation. This may be some simple stuff. Be a moderator in some certain place. As I'm just going to say, as a uh, from upfront, doesn't have to be technical. So, first, you have an encouraged perspective to contribute to the communication with the exist existing contribute existing contribute. That's also important because they they may give you the idea about you know, which areas they need help. And also it will also show you and you how contribution contributing is work based on the area to install. And also you have to make that uh, provide a self-contained and well documented issues or needs to so they will get their feedback. Very important because uh Documentation is also another perspective because you're going to have to make sure that uh, some people may find documentation is lacking. And if they have a proper one, it would be also an, an amazing experience because without documentation, software code is going to be low. But that's just a general information. And another point is guiding and help the person. Uh, perspective to contributors to turn them into the successful one, which means we are basically trying to encourage our new comers to make sure that they are happy and contributing well. So that's also very important that they can be also feel that success of the of their contribution and to establish a better. Uh, mentor and mentee relationships among existing and prospective futures is also really important because people sometimes need guidance and we are, as a system contributor, we are always here to help. Yeah, so that's all. Just uh, if you come over any team and introduce yourself, try to join, and people in their there we are basically existing contributors gonna probably help you. Just ask the question, don't be shy. We are here to help as well. Provide a comfortable communication channel perspective contributor is also important because we wanna make sure that everybody is uh, feel confident and make sure that it is secure, basically comfortable also as we said, and feel better better about the way they can communication important points. Cool. So one thing I wanted to mention here is we have a group that is very specific to working on these efforts and they are called the Fedora Join SIG. So they're in place to do all of this stuff. This is a great place for anyone who wants to join Fedora to get started. Um, they're going to you know, encourage you. They're going to help you with uh, figuring out finding first issues and where you want to go and um, helping, helping you find a mentee potentially. And they provide a safe space for you to ask questions about Fedora. Um, where like, there's no stupid question anywhere, but this is a specific place for newbies to ask questions. So the Fedora join folks are great. They have a channel just for um, that, where you can discuss new things, new um, interest in the community. So definitely check out the docs and you'll be able to find the, the communication channel there. So something 
in Fedora is we look for potential, not polish. We're not expecting people to come in as coding wizards or, you know, marketing pros or, you know, top tier designers. Um, you can come with at whatever skill level you are at, right? Like, don't be shy just because you don't know something. This is actually a great place to learn the skills that you're missing. So this all sounds awesome. Where do I start? So the first thing you want to do is make a Fedora account. So I'm guessing a lot of folks here probably have Fedora accounts already. But if you don't, it is accounts.fedoraproject.org. Um, the next thing that's going to happen is we'll give you a welcome ticket. So when a new person joins the community, they might not know what to do immediately. If they don't, the join SIG helps them explore the community and find a part of the community that suits their interests. So the ticketing project is for new members looking to find their way. So what we do when a contributor joins? Actually, just give me one second. Apologies. When contributor joins, uh, we are allowing the contributor to give them uh, an introduction in their ticket through the mailing list or join the Pajura group. So after they are doing their introduction, we are answering this mailing mailing list or answering in the Pajura ticket to give them to explore uh, the part of the Fedora so they can have an idea and show the groups and six and show them the, which part of the, to contribute them also finding their interest. And then from time to time, we are keeping these tickets ongoing and the time to check like, how is your progressing? Like you can always come back, ask for a new question if you have any and make sure that you are on the right track, and also you uh, want to, you want to be happy to into your area. You would like to be also be happy about it. So. so uh, how do I start at the contributing? There are some roles. Uh, let's talk about coding roles. So the coding roles is basically technical skill requirement once and if you don't know any of the technical skills you can learn in time so we encourage you to do that as well the first is packaging packaging is basically our building upstreams from upstream to applications for federal linux they are respond to bug reports and ensure package are in good shape which means every time you install a software coming from the federal packager so you, when you become one you will basically do this as a task Release engineering is basically one of the very important uh, section of the Fedora, Fedora project. Fedora release engineering is basically has have many utilities that maintain to in respect of upstream location. Quality assurances, which is short name is Fedora QA, is basically a project that covers all the testing the software that makes up Fedora. The goal is basically continually improve the quality of Fedora releases and updates. So you can also test updates. You can also become one of the quality member and do a, a more high level of testings as well. And you could file bugs for them to test, which I don't know if they're going to like or not, but you can still well, do that, <laughs> I, I do. I do a lot. They, they like it. Don't worry. OK, so yes, <laughs> that's a part of that process, too. So filing bugs is really important for us to do, too. Exactly. Another part of it is federal infrastructure. Is if you know your way around in system administration or more high level stuff, basically manage the services, keep them is fine, like mailing it, bots, our building system, our discuss federal, ask federal, pajure. This is basically. And federal website now, upside and development, basically our front-end and back-ends of Fedora web applications, which is basically 
keep the websites updated, renovated it, and keep them working as the, in the, in the nice technology and the latest way to handle it. Uh, but the internalization is also on that, make sure that our Fedora has localization support and supporting the many different languages. There are some technical work and non-technical work in there in this certain area. So it can be kind of a bit of a boat. And there is now the non coding, sorry. You got it. All right, so there's all kinds of stuff going on in, the, in Fedora that's very much coding related, um, but there's also plenty that's happening that's non-coding. And we care and need the technical coding people a ton, but we also super need people to work on things that are not coding. This is an area across all of like free and open source software that gets a little bit less attention than some of the coding and technical work that happens. Um, so I want to encourage you, if you have skills or you want to gain skills around things that are not coding, get involved in some of these teams. So the first one I'm going to talk about is translations. Honoral mentioned it a little bit already. Um, the more coding side of it has to do with a tool called WebLate, but we also just have translations. So this is happening around docs, websites, where we need people to go through and translate our documentation so that it's accessible to people who are speaking other languages. Um, we also have community outreach, which covers a lot of different teams. So that's ambassadors, that's uh, folks that are ambassadors for the Fedora community. They're going to events, they're organizing events, um, that's advocates, and they organize a a bit of smaller events, but they can also get funding to go to, to different conferences. Um, we also have um, the join SIG, which is mostly online, and they're the folks that welcome new people into Fedora. Um, we have the diversity, equity, and inclusion team, and they have a goal to encourage uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion in the Fedora community. So they're doing events, they're helping with mentored projects and supporting interns. Um, we have a DEI rep on the council. So they are also all over the project helping to promote DEI. We also have graphic design and UI UX. So the Fedora design team is Fedora's in-house design agency. And they're providing all the different beautiful artwork that you see here from the badges to this um, the slide deck template, which you've probably seen across the conference, um, to how our websites look, to um, the wallpapers. So there's all kinds of different ways you can get involved creatively with the Fedora design team. Um, we also have a Fedora podcast. They kind of run by season. So I think they're in between seasons right now. But if you want to get involved and help out with the podcast, you can just join their channel and they are recording, editing, producing um, episodes that are featuring Fedora folks talking about different technical things, talking about events, um, talking about stuff that's happening in Fedora now. Um, it's a really fun group of folks doing that. Um, we also have um, a magazine. So that's a user-based or user-focused um, pub publication platform, if you will. Um, and we totally welcome pretty much anyone to write a post for the magazine. And, you know, it could be on your, basically your specialty or whatever you might find interesting that you want to share um, with the greater Fedora user community. We also have documentation and we are always looking for more people to work on documentation. Um, this is something that can quickly go out of date. So we need people to work on documentation and keep that up to date. Um, we, need help. we need definitely help on that area. Yes. And I would like to also say that if you are a podcast person, please help them out. They need also help as well as a tiny shout out. To them. They are also doing a great job, but they need help. Yes, for sure. Um, we have a program management team. So if you're, 
interested in coordination organization, um, learning how to herd the cats as they will, um, this is a team for you. Uh, the main, there's two functions. One is to be a program management resource for all the other Fedora teams. So that means, you know, like the websites and app team can say, hey, we're doing a revamp and we're looking for someone to help be the glue between the different groups that are going to be working on this. And that person will go in, kind of help them figure out what's what and who's doing what and what timeline they're on, right? So that's one thing the program management team does. The other is to back up the Fedora program manager, Ben Cotton, um, when, when he's out of the office or otherwise unavailable. So there's some, you know, change things and, you know, wrangling for the release and that sort of thing. Um, so another non-coding role we have is mentorship. And we need mentorship all across of Fedora, right? That's one of going to be one of our five-year goals. Strategies is to have everyone be either a mentor or a mentee. And that means that you are helping guide someone along or you have someone who's guiding you. And this could also mean like, what's the right word? Mobility, right? Like you can, I'm over here doing graphic design. I could potentially go over here and learn from the magazine writers about more copy editing, right? Like you don't have to just stick with the thing that you're doing. Even if you're already involved in Fedora, you can go seek a mentor. In addition to that, there are also, let's be forecasting. There's another group is coming together, which is the accessibility work group. It's also working for certain accessibility and helping disability people to uh, helping them out and uh, gather them, the people who need help on talking about how to make them look better. So, uh, even if you're talking through, uh, you say documentation getting old, as you see, even our slides getting old, we need updates as well. So let's go. Cool. So we're going to talk about how to become a successful contributor. And the first thing I'm going to say is we all started somewhere. We all started from the beginning. Uh, anyone you see here had to have day one um, in the Fedora community. So uh, there's a couple good things to think about as you're becoming a contributor to Fedora. Well, you have to keep it in mind that uh, when you try something or try to become a contributor, uh, there are certain things we have to make sure that we are okay and we are ready. First thing is time commitment. The commitment is basically reserving some of your time. It can be more time or less time, but we, we strongly believe that you're going to be enjoying what you're doing and considering the time you committed, it can be months, week, hour, but just make sure that the commitment you have is okay and hopefully uh, be consistent about it because people also uh, want to trust you, support you, and you wanna, don't want to get them like them. But I'm not saying you cannot stop it. Just uh, make sure that the commitment you have is going to be good and gracious in your end as well. An observation is definitely very important piece because there are a lot of organizations and teams is you are looking for is just look at them observe them when you try to join them just make sure that what they are doing it listen to their stories or their past or they will they will definitely give you a better perspective and also what's the work on it well pick something that's important to you like you are passionate about it like you just have to say that for example i want to translate this page 100 percent in my language then make sure that the interest you evolve is going to be encourage you and something you lack in the team forever. And hopefully you're going to be happy about it as well. Uh, I think uh, let's 
continue to do other situations. Money, I think there are some couple more. Want to yeah. say something? Sure. And I just want to mention if you have questions, we might miss them in the chat. So feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Um, so there's a couple things to keep in mind, you know, after you've said, okay, I want to start contributing to Fedora. You might have find some, found something you're interested in. You found a team. You've sat back and watched them, um, how they communicate, what their norms are, that sort of thing. Um, there's a couple things to keep in mind. First of all, avoid jumping into the deep end. Don't take on a whole new project yourself or it's going to be very, very tough, right? Try to pick up something small, a small task to start. You know, fix up a little bit of documentation. Choose one design ticket and just work on that one. Um, choose one package that you might want to maintain. Um, so don't take on too much and um, that, that increases your chance of you know, kind of losing interest or not being able to follow through on what you might be might be interested in. Um, another thing that we would recommend is finding a mentor or a sponsor. So someone that um, is willing to take your questions. Not everyone wants to ask questions in, you know, the, the main channels in the Fedora network. So that totally makes sense. Um, Sometimes the question might seem obvious to everyone else, but you're new, so you just don't know, and that's totally fine. So having a mentor or a sponsor really helps to get around that and, you know, have like a, uh, a safe space to ask further questions as you've been around Fedora for a while. Um, and yeah, just keep yourself busy. And I think that means Follow through on the things that you've said you're going to do. I think Anurel touched on this a little bit before, but community is based on trust. Friendship is based on trust. And so, you know, being a part of Fedora long term or even short term um, in a successful way means building trust with other people. We are a bunch of awesome people, um, but, you know, it doesn't really work that well if you say you're going to do something and then you don't do it. Um, what we call that around here is cookie licking. So try not to lick too many cookies. That means that no one else can take that work. Um, and it's kind of been cleaned by you. And we don't want to take it once you've said you're, you know, you're interested and want to work on it. So um, keep yourself busy. Cool. So... Um, Diversity is one of Fedora's greatest strengths, but it can also lead to communication issues and conflict. We are from all over the world. Every culture has a different way of interacting with each other, right? Some of us like to tell stories. Some of us like to get straight to the point. Some of us are on, being on time means five minutes early. Some of us being on time means up to a half an hour later than the time that we said. Um, so everyone really has a different way of approaching things. So it comes down to each contributor to ensure that doesn't happen. And a lot of it is about just open communication, but also be considerate. Um, your work will be used by other people and in turn will depend on the work of others. So decisions and things you're doing in Fedora does affect other people. And you should, you know, take that into account when you're making decisions. And oftentimes, I'm just not making decisions on my own. I'm at least asking the Mindshare Committee or even the Fedora Project Leader or someone like, hey, what do you think about this thing? Um, you know, making decisions on your own is not. My cat just knocked something over. <laughs> I don't know if I ever could hear that, but um, also be respectful. Everyone comes from different cultures. We all have different cultural norms in our own countries. And, you know, that's why we kind of try to come up with our own community norms, like having social agreements or, you know, like things we all agree on, right? For meetings, that sort of thing. We have like a 
whole set of meeting commands that we use. And that way we can kind of come to an even level playing field with each other, right? But inevitably, we're going to feel frustrated every now and then. So that means it's time to take a moment away from the keyboard, take a moment for yourself, take a moment to breathe. Um, Fedora will always be there. Will always be there. Um, so I mean, at least the project doesn't go anywhere. So it right? just stay there and waiting for you. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so thank you so much for listening to us and and attending the talk. We are. Uh -huh. Um, happy to take some Q and A. So I see one uh, question in the question and answer. So Paul's asking, so I can do this talk at a non Fedora event, and could you send the presentation slides? So yes, absolutely you can. It looks like yeah. Luna um, just provided the slide uh, link. Um, but yeah, this is this is a, a slide deck we've made so that other people can go and you know spread the word about how to join Fedora. I would, if you're not sure about any parts, I would say message someone um, that you know about giving the presentation. Maybe do a practice presentation with somebody. Um, exactly. And, and, you know, I'd be happy to, to help you out with that, Paul, if that's something you want to do, right? Um, practicing something like this is definitely a good idea. I have done it at this point, like, probably six or seven times. So I can do it a little bit more on the fly. But there's a lot of different stuff to, to remember and to think about, you know, when you're doing the presentation. So happy to help uh, and be a sounding board for you. Um, other people have some questions for us. Mm. Yes, yeah, so Fedora join to Libera chat works with Matrix too. Yeah, yes. I believe it's bridged. Yeah, it's bridged. But if you want to go to Matrix, uh, we, I think I say a link, but just in case that you can. Yes. Is the original web link then you can also use to end part to make sure that using your client for the element of the most prominent one any You're other welcome. questions about joining fedora what about is fedora, fedora ambassador oh so go gonna, ahead I'll, i'm gonna take this one so fedora ambassador is basic in a talk about in a little bit about in a nutshell is uh, ambassadors are representative of the Fedora. An ambassador ensures that public understand federal principles and the work the Fedora doing. It. Additionally, we are responsible and helping to grow uh, the contributor base and acting uh, as a conduit between post project and the federal community and the events and we just basically creating more uh how can i say opportunities to the new people and uh, previously when i was doing uh, ambassador work more actively they are also organizing events in these events uh it's not like a very largely a, a nest level or a block level it's like more like, like a hatch level like locally like for example, if you're in university per, uh, person, you can do it in your university. Or if you know a place like a hackerspace or a, a place to know a certain groups doing a plus project, you can also organize events and them and gather them and basically show them to what is Fedora and what are we doing it. Maybe you can find a new contributor around it as well. So there are many ways to be doing a successful ambassadors, become a Fedora ambassadors. It's just uh, basically a couple of them. I just can't. I think hopefully that will answer your question. So. I can take the next one if you want. Sure. So the next question is, how do you become a Fedora ambassador? And how would one get started? Um, just wondering if I can do that as well as design. So I would say, yes, you can do both. I would also say that 
um, I would not overwork yourself, right? Don't, this is one of those tips that we were giving, you know, don't take on too much at a time, but you can absolutely do both. And um, the way that you be, that, <clears throat> excuse me, the way that you become a Fedora ambassador is by joining the Fedora ambassador meetings. So those are happening once a month and you can go there and say, hey, I'm interested in becoming a Fedora ambassador. Right now we are doing a group mentorship style because um, basically the kind of the old way of the one-on-one -on -one mentorship just wasn't sustainable for people anymore. Um, so we are taking, we're setting up, you know, once we get like four or five people who are interested, we're setting up group mentorship calls about becoming a Fedora ambassador. Um, so I think I have to take a look about when the meeting is in August, but I can find that for you. Um, and you would join it by the chat. There would be a video call, um, and I'm pretty sure it's probably in our FedOcal, is my guess. Um, uh, is yes, FedOcal is there, but uh, if, if it's updated in the last section, yes, it must. It's the only way. And also, addition to that, I think, Mary, we should also talk about a little bit more uh, the Fedora uh, advocate as well, I believe, because advocate of the relationship with ambassador, it's kind of like, uh, as a, it's our new way as well. And would you like to say something about it or may I? Yeah. Uh, I I'm happy either way. Uh, let me do a bit of a start then, then you can continue with that because it's sure. an idea I think I created around your time. So I think you have more knowledge about it. Um, basically, Fedora Advocate is also basically has a similar task. I mean, I'm not going to say 100% same, but uh, very, very close to the same. It's basically passionate about contributing, who wants to participate in community events, represent the Fedora, help grow the user and contributor community, is advocates basically doing and spreading the knowledge about the area of interesting, and many advocates also organize release parties, share the information, and what's new about the Fedora, which is exactly the same path what ambassador are doing it. And basically, if you want to have a starting point, I think uh, also become a Fedora advocate could be also a good choice as well. Is the link, Mary? If you want to add something, please. Um, I would just say that you know, an ambassador is. Well, first of all, I agree with Anurab. I think that starting as advocate makes a lot of sense, but that doesn't mean you can't join the ambassador meetings. You no, no, no. I just yeah. a, a easy, yeah. easy steps kind of way. I yeah. prefer to use it. Absolutely. I also think that um, Fedora ambassador definitely has a level of responsibility to it. Exactly. Um, you are rep representing Fedora. So that means you, you know, when you're wearing that shirt, when you're wearing that hat, if you will, um, you need to, you know, act professionally and be putting on a really great face for Fedora. And I would exactly. say that there's, you know, expectations around how ambassadors act and how they speak about Fedora and also you know, being up to date on what's going on in Fedora. So I would say that there's a certain level of activity um, that you you want to be having if you're going to actively work as an ambassador for Fedora. Because I'm completely agree. because when I was in the progress of being an ambassador, my the mentor I chosen based on uh, the availability because in that time we choosing a mentor that who is available, have a time to uh helping me out guiding me out and when i choose that he was asking me certain questions about uh like a, a professional level of uh what's the for example what is fedora what's the foundation what is that and also giving me certain scenarios that how do you want to represent this uh, if you have in this situation and you have to know what you're going to say exactly you're going to make sure that Everything you said is basically going to affect that you are a face of the Fedora. So you're going to be very, uh, how can I say, um, be sure that what you say is going to be highly must be accurate because 
it's an important to that because I cannot just go and say that, uh, for example, I'm going to say a, a false information that uh, Fedora is a Debian package based. This is completely wrong. We cannot say that. We have to make sure that Fedora is RPM based distribution and et cetera. So this kind of stuff is very important when you become an ambassador because that's, as you said, is a very important responsibility to uh, say that this t shirt and this logo has a meaning of it, not just a, a pretty face. You are uh, a, a person who's probably. You also have there. a pretty face, though. So, <laughs> two and one. <laughs> Yay! So I hope that answered your cash, your questions, Paul. Um, <laughs> aw, a pretty brain and a pretty heart. Very sweet. Um, well, I hope that helped, Paul. Um, I wonder if there's any other questions. We have about four minutes left, so there's time for one more. If there's anything, or if not, we can <laughs> we can all um, go I, step into the next sessions. There's a couple going on, so what were you I think say? people I think people wants to stay us forever in here. <laughs> um, yes. All right. Thank, thank you, Matthew. Yes. So. Thank you all for joining. And if you want to give this presentation, please do let me know. I'm happy to be a, a practice audience for you and give you feedback. Um, and uh, I think we're heading into our last couple of sessions uh, for Nest with Fedora 2022. So see you all around. Thanks.